Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So I just finished this top, this workbench top that I'm going to use on my hydraulic scissor lift. The scissor lift that I have been using as a workbench, but now I have a proper top for it. And a proper woodworking workbench top needs a proper woodworking vise. So let me show you what I'm working with here. So what you see here is an American Scale Company number 204 woodworking vise. And this isn't just any ordinary vise. This actually belonged to my grandfather. Now the big question is which grandfather did it belong to? And it's actually been a hard thing to research and find out whether this belonged to my, either my maternal or paternal grandfather. Like many men that came from that greatest generation, uh, both of my grandfathers came home from World War II and started their own businesses. One started a construction company and began building chapels for churches. The other one started a chrome plating business. But both were makers and innovators and they just basically uh, used their ingenuity to figure out the day-to-day -day problems of running a business. So this could have belonged to either one of my grandfathers. I'm more inclined to believe it came from my maternal grandfather, the one that owned the construction business, because this is somewhat related to that business. Um, but either way, all I know is this is my grandfather's vice. It's an antique and it needs restoration. So I figured I'd take you guys along for the ride. I hope this interests you. If so, stick around. This vise has an interesting design. Um, if you look at the lead screw on it, you'll see that it is missing threads along one portion of the lead screw. And that lines up with the nut that's inside here. So um, basically it is a quick, it gives it a quick release function and it only really gives you about a half a turn once the nut is engaged and so you just use the quick release to get it close to what piece you're working on then and then you just barely turn the handle to tighten the vise the rest of the way um, there's a lot of things that are going to need work um, these rails are rusty they're going to need to be taken care of this um, this dog I guess is what you would call it retractable retractable dog is frozen or stuck inside the slot so I'm gonna to have to figure out how to loosen that up I'm going to try to salvage these jaws uh, the the oak jaws that my grandfather had made for the for the vise I'm gonna to try to figure out a way to incorporate them into the side of my bench top um, so I can have a nice flush clamping surface using integrating these into that I don't know if the handle is original um, this knob of the handle is broken, so I'm going to um, I'm going to have to remove the handle anyway. But I will try to salvage this the best way I can. I'm going to try to keep the handle all original. So first thing I need to do is I need to completely disassemble this um, so I can uh, clean up the rust. The paint is in great shape. I'm actually not going to repaint this at all. Um, this uh, device does not have very much paint loss and there's not a lot of, you know how when you get antiques, for some reason it's like somebody spilled a can of paint all over it, like on old hand planes and things, and this has not experienced that. So I'm probably just going to clean it and uh, maybe lubricate it with some WD-40 to protect it, uh, but I'm going to try to keep the paint intact.
Okay, so before I proceed with the cleaning and the restoration of this vise, I wanted to make a couple of notes. Uh, first of all, overall, the condition of this vise is in, it's pretty pristine. Uh, there's not a lot of rust, just mainly on these rails. Um, the castings are great. Like I said before, the paint is great. I just looked at the half nut. It's made of bronze, and it is in really good condition and not overly worn. Um, I... I'm curious about this piece of rubber. It looks like it was hand cut and I'm wondering and and there's evidence that somebody has been inside this vise before because there's marks on the little uh, knob for for the dog to extend the dog up. Um, so I'm wondering if somebody put this in maybe to keep it from rattling or maybe to help the nut engage the, uh, the thread um, so I may try to, the first time I reassemble this, I may try to reassemble it uh, without that rubber in there. Um, from what I could tell, the half nut, let me get the right part here, the half nut rides inside that slot there, like that, and it, it's designed to slide back and forth inside here. And there's a little spring, a little return spring, that goes inside this half nut that helps keep it in this position. But it does have wiggle room. Now, when this piece of rubber was in here, it had pretty much locked this half nut down and kept it from moving. So, again, I'm not sure why this is in there. Uh, I don't know if it's part of the design or if it was added after the fact. But once I get everything cleaned up and when I, I'm going to put it back together, without the rubber first and try it out and then if it is a problem you know if I do encounter some type of issue I'll go ahead and lube this rubber up with some WD-40 or something and so it slides around a little bit better and then stick it in there besides that the handle is in good condition I can save it um, all I'll do is I just need to epoxy this knob back on into place after I'm done putting the vise back together um, and um, so really all that's left to do is just some de-rusting, some cleaning, and then reassembly. And then I actually have to install it, but that's probably going to be a different video. So I think to start, I'm just going to hit these big pieces with the wire wheel. Um, just because I don't want to make up a big container for the evaporust. I only have two gallons of evaporust and I don't really have an appropriate container to hold these. The smaller pieces I'll go ahead and you know drop in the evaporust and let them soak for a while. Um, I am gonna have to look up to see if evaporust is safe for painted surfaces because I don't really want to mess up this paint and if it is safe I'll drop these in as well. Okay, so I cleaned up the parts with some soap and water. I did my research. It looks like evaporust is going to be okay for this paint. I've got a gallon of it right here. So just put it to work. Okay. 
Right, while that's soaking, I'm going to turn my attention to the handle. Um, it, it seems to have some type of a polyurethane finish on, at least on the knobs. This portion of the handle might have had a finish on it, but it's probably been worn away. I'm going to sand it all down, plus the extra knob here. And then I'm probably going to apply a Danish oil or maybe just boiled linseed oil. But I'll do that after I've reinstalled it into the vise during the reassembly process. Do you really want to sit there and watch me sand this piece of wood? I didn't think so. I'll catch up with you again once I'm done with this. Alright, it's been 24 hours. I don't really feel like I need to explain the virtues of evaporust. I'm sure you've all seen what it can do on other YouTube videos. This, uh, I'm gonna have to continue to work on this one because I was only able to get the evaporust up to only was able to get the evaporust up to this level, so I gotta do the rest of this one. Set it aside for now. Well, I think it may have actually damaged the paint. Paint's coming off. It's okay, I'll just match the color. And I was hoping it was powder coat, and uh, you know, and it would have been more resilient, but as you can see, just rubbing with my finger, the paint has come right off. So, it probably is due to the fact that there was probably rust under the paint, but it's okay. A little disappointing, but it's not the end of the world. Ooh. And this had a different color paint. It was like a really just a slight blue tint of a gray and it's all coming off too <clears throat> very slimy feeling full disclosure this is my first time using Vaporust I think instead of putting it back in the jug, I'm just going to save that as a, as a watertight bucket right there. And I'll label it and we'll be good. I'm going to wash my hands and be right back. Alright, I'm properly gloved up now. I'm just tired of having to wash my hands every time I touch that stuff. I'm going to wipe off the excess muck that's left over on these and then um, See how much paint's left over, but I'm probably end up, gonna end up having to remove that paint. Well, this obviously is not compatible with nitrile gloves. How did I not know that? I guess that's rubber that the demonstration is using. It doesn't even tell you what type of gloves to use. Well, since the nitrile gloves didn't work, I guess this would be a good opportunity to try out these SAS Safety Thickster uh, latex gloves. Uh, SAS was kind enough to send me some samples. And these are some really heavy duty gloves here. So hopefully I won't have any trouble with this paint stripper 
eating through these gloves. I find the stripper works best if you massage it into the workpiece. You don't miss anything when you do it this way. Okay, the next step is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to take some of this blue tape and tape off the areas on these pieces that I don't want to have painted, which really consists of just the jaw faces and this inner pocket where the brass half nut goes. So I'm going to get to that, catch up with you guys later. Okay, so I prepped this as much as I plan on prepping it. Um, most of these parts aren't even going to be seen because they'll be on, on the underside of the bench. But I'm going to go ahead and start out with this um, self-etching primer. There we go. I'm sure you've seen it in other videos. It's going to be my undercoat, and then I will put the top coat on right afterwards. Okay, I've got all the parts primed now and it comes time to decide what color to paint this. Originally, or the, the way I received it, it was blue. I don't believe that's the original color because um, there was a, a type of gray under some of the parts. and Either the gray was primer or it was the original color. So I went ahead and I reached out to you guys, the subscribers on my community channel here. Um, on on YouTube and I just asked uh, what color should I paint it and the options were blue, red, gray, black or something wild and by a very narrow margin uh, red won out with 32% um, now you know there was only 28 votes that's about that's less than 2% of my subscriber base but to be honest with you uh, that's kind of what I would have expected anyway. And by the way, if you haven't uh, already done it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified of future projects. So the color that I have on hand that's red is this um, Rust-Oleum. The color is called Apple Red. It's gonna be nice. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get right to um, laying down my first coat on these guys. Okay, I'm going to attempt to highlight the the text on the face of this vise 
the casting is really rough right in this area, so it might be tough, but I'll see what I can do. I'm going to just use a white paint marker. I've never done anything like this before, so hopefully it'll work out. First mistake already. <laughs> Alright, that's not going to work. <laughs> okay, well, that's, while this side is drying, I'm going to go try something different on this side. And this time I'm going to use kind of like a stamp method. So you'll see what I mean in just a sec. You know, what do you think about that? Okay, I've started to inlay this vise into my the side of my workbench. As you can see, I've notched out a space for the fixed vise jaw to sit in. Um, and then I have also notched out a spot for you know this oak jaw to also sit in and it's going to be flush with the side of the workbench this was the original well original this was the jaw one of the jaws that was on the uh, vise I guess you could call it a soft jaw it was on the vise when I received it so anyway one thing of note this casting is completely uneven and out of square if you look, I am perfectly lined up with the top edge of this bench. This bench is three and a quarter inches. Uh, this jaw is three and seven eighths inches. If I line the jaw up with the upper surface of the bench, line it up with the upper surface or the upper edge of the jaw, you can see exactly how out of square this is and then that translates down to the mounting tabs so I knew that I was gonna have to shim it regardless I probably have a good I don't know maybe a sixteenth of an inch gap here but then you come over on this side and it's way out it's closer to a quarter of an inch everything seems to be a little twisted out of square and then the thickness of this jaw, I had to use a router, chisels, and and a shoulder plane because the upper edge of the jaw is a lot thinner than the lower thickness of the jaw here. So it's actually slightly beveled in order to make this flush with this face. So it's been a challenge. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. It's going to look great when I'm done, so I'm just going to finish I'm gonna go ahead and you know commit this jaw here and then mount the rest of the parts to this vise and get this project finished
I've coated the handle most of the way with boiled linseed oil. I didn't want it to be on the gluing end yet because I didn't want it to interfere with the glue joint. And then on this guy, it's got a couple cracks, so I'm going to glue it all up really good and then I'm going to figure out a way to clamp this up and hopefully it'll make it last. Forgot to put my O-rings on. Yeah, that was a good bond too. <clears throat> All right, before I do the final reveal, I have noted some issues with this vise, and that's probably why it was taken out of service so long ago. First of all, there's this backing plate here that binds these three uh, rods together, and really its only purpose is so you don't accidentally pull the vise all the way out of the mechanism. It's basically like a stop block or whatever you want to call it. The problem is, I don't know if I noted this earlier, but I noticed that these holes are not round, they're oblong, and um, what I found is that the you know center to center dimension here is perfectly fine, but this is off center by a good quarter of an inch, and so then it forces this into one direction and it binds this inside the half nut. So, I mean, I don't know if you can see, if you look, you can tell that this hole is in that direction by a significant amount and it basically makes this vise unusable which probably has something to do with the condition of the vise because the vise looks relatively unused the other thing I noticed was uh, whether or not it was part of the original design this spacer is needed because these threads on the half nut will not engage the master all thread here um, when without it. So I'm going to have to install this. I'm going to lube it up really good and install this and then put everything back together and we'll see how everything goes after that. I made my own slide stop by drilling out a large washer and just sticking it over the end and that should keep me from accidentally pulling the vise all the way out. I don't think I need really alignment. These, these rods are pretty solid. They don't flex. I mean they're a good seven-eighths of an inch thick and this guy isn't gonna flex either. So 